So here we have it, Sergio Higuita, 57 kilo, tiny little climb up from Colombia, and he's really impressed me this year. So he signed for education first halfway through the season from Fundacion Uscadi, who are a continental team, but he used to race here at Manzana Postamon. Anyway, so these are the main results that were really impressive. Amgen Tour California, second overall, second on the Mount Baldy stage. Uh, it was really, really impressive. Um, I've got a video of that. Tor Pallone, he was pretty good, not unbelievable, but, you know, got the job done. And he really impressed me on the on the second stage to Calpe. And we are going to have some good footage of that. So now we have uh, Tor California, 2019, stage six. Richie Port goes on the attack. George Bennett's just behind him and out of shot is just Higita. Richie Port looks like he doesn't, you know, go full full, but he does a decent attack. And Higita's sort of like wondering who's going to respond. And he does a huge attack now. And distances Pogaccia, Bennett, and Spilak, and everyone else very easily. And then goes straight past Richie Port so easily. Richie Port's just like, who is this guy? And no one really knew who he was at this time. Pogaccia then goes straight past Richie Port and tries to chase him down, and eventually does. And you can see he's a really explosive small guy who, um, you know, he's going to a pure, pure climber. This is the final. George Bennett managed to get on. Pogaccia's there. But he messes up this last corner. He has a real good sprint into it. And then look at this line. He takes such a wide line. Pogaccia goes on the inside. This this corner is quite technical, but he took way too far a line. Lost all his speed. He had to break halfway through the corner and lost out. But you can see he's still got a decent punch. Just getting back at Pogaccia. And there it was, second overall on the Amgen Tour of California. So now we have Vuelta Espana stage two. There he is. I've just highlighted him here uh, with the red arrows. And watch his sprint. Valverde overtakes him and he destroys Valverde and everyone else ahead of him. So he sees Valverde comes fast and latches onto him and just puts on the afterbody. He's only 57 kilos, but in the draft of Valverde, super punchy, and it goes flying past everyone. Um, I think he took seventh on the stage, and uh, yeah, it was super, super impressive from him. Okay, so we saw his sprint. Um, I'm just going to go through the power data um, before. Um, if you haven't seen stage two, check it out. It's on NBC Highlights on YouTube. Really, really good. And there was a very steep climb towards the end. So look at Nico Roach, obviously slightly heavier, 70 kilo rider. So obviously this average power won't be 100% correct, but you know, it shows you how hard the stage is roughly in terms of what's per kilo. So 283 weights average power, that's gonna be 300 normalized for five and a half hours for a 70 kilo rider. Pretty tough, 7,800 calories burned, mad. Um, so it was a really hard day, a lot harder than people expected, 3,370 meters. So you'll be able to see the first climb 280 watts, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Um, and then we're sort of going to go through it again up this climb here, 265 watts, nothing too crazy. But it's on the pe it's on the pedals all day. This one, 285 watts. The one that really exploded was the Cali D uh, 1 to 12 climb. So obviously that's the street numbers uh, of the particular road. Uh, but anyway, so average power 430 watts for a 70 kilo rider. That's six watts per kilo. Um, I've got a lot of different power numbers, which I'll show you in a minute. But you can see there's a lot of dropouts. But the main most important thing uh, to look at is just this first section here, just 470 watts for three minutes, um, which obviously is super hard. Um, and then as they go over the top, um, sorry, wrong segment. As they go over the top, it then flattens off a little bit. Uh, we'll then have another look at Tadej Pogacar. Uh, he's obviously a bit of a rival to Igita, as we saw in the Tour of California. And again, from this climb, you can see it's 390 watts. He's a 66 kilo rider, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Rider weights very hard to get um, accurately. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, 420 watts. So that's, again, a little less than 7 watts per kilo, more like 6.5 for the boy. Uh, and then you can see there's a lot of up and downs. And then towards the end here, again, it's 407 watts. But, I mean, you might say, well, what about the watts per kilo? Basically, if you can do 20k an hour up 9%, that is pretty, that's pretty fast. Um, and overall, that's 387. Um, so, you know, for Higita to get the line, he did something around 6.5 watts per kilo, I would predict, up here. Uh, and then on this flat valley road, you're like, oh, wait, no, it's not a flat valley road. It's actually a climb, 270 watts for 15 minutes afterwards. So it wasn't, you know, it was super, super easy. Um, and then on the descent for Pogaccio, 200 watts, so basically full full recovery. Um, so the interesting thing though is that obviously Roach did get away in that select group, um, but I can't actually see any data. I'm not 100% sure when it happened. But if we look here, there's no obvious peak power to get away. I think they sort of just rolled off the front. Um, and then once they're away, it didn't look super hard, like 350 watts, I guess, for eight minutes is still decent, but it's only about five watts per kilo for him. So you know, that's tempo for those sort of guys with the threshold around 
Nico Roach, our predicted special, will be 5.8 to 6 watts per kilo. Um, and then in the sprint, it's 1100 watts. So if we look at the final climb, though, this is more interesting. So this is for this month. You can see high man, you might not know who that is, that's David Fodermiller. His power data is incorrect. 450 watts would be about 7.2 watts per kilo, which I'm not 100% sure is correct. Um, but anyway, you can see here, George Bennett's 380 watts, he's 58 kilos. So, you know, you can see from here, the power data always doesn't agree. Um, but anyway, it's around six and a half to seven watts per kilo for eight minutes, which, you know, isn't bonkers, but at the end of a hard stage, it is pretty crazy. Uh, and you can just also see the difference. Like if you see uh, Phil Gilles and James Knox, they're in the second group, uh, same with these guys. There's only, you know, 20 second, 15 second gap over the top of the climb, but that was enough to cause the separation. And um, you already saw Iggy does sprint uh, where he took the second, but you can see Iggy's um, aerobically very fit and also has a very, very solid sprint. At the foot. This is the intermediate sprint and Higuita in the pink colours. He's mixing up amongst the sprint finish. He wants the time bonus and he gets there.